Good day, folks, and welcome back to the channel. This is clean. This is really nice. Ah, it looks all beautifully stock. That's what I like to see. Yep, original four-speed top loader. Got 62,000 original miles on the car. Original gauges. I'm sure the upholstery's been redone. Just the inserts in the seats actually have been redone. Well, that's, that's expected to be done. It's just as long as it's done right. Right. And this all looks right. So how much are you going to get out of it? My asking on the car is 125000 Today, we'll show you expensive cars and bikes on Pawn Stars. Must watch. It's a neat bike. It's really simple technology. Uh, you, know, you just basically have two cylinders, a distributor, and I love the rear suspension. Springs on the seat. This could be one of those Indians that was made for military use. That would totally explain the left-handed throttle. Yeah, they usually had their gun pouch back here so they could pull their machine gun and shoot it with their right hand. How much were you looking to get for it? Well, I'd like to get 12,000 for it. 1924 Dodge Brothers sedan. If there are two things that go great together, it's the old man and classic cars. Finally, a car that's older than the old man, though. Hey, how you doing? Doing great. I brought an old car down to see if you guys are interested in buying. All right, I got a lot in the back. You want to pull it around? You bet. <laughs> the seller brought in a 1924 Dodge Brothers business sedan that's almost 100 years old. Old Dodge Brothers. 1924 Dodge Brothers business sedan. I came to the pawn shop today to try to sell my 1924 Dodge Brothers business sedan. I'd like to sell it today to get a little cash to be able to get out and travel in an RV and have a good time. I'm looking to get somewhere around 14 5 and the least I'd like to have for it would be 10 So tell me everything you know about it. Back in 2001, it was completely ground up restoration and I purchased it. I drive it in parades and things. You know anything about Dodge Brothers? Back in the 20s, they were a big company. They were never like Ford, but they made a lot of cars. The Dodge brothers that started this company actually had worked for Henry Ford and then started their own company. Yeah, you know, the old cars are all original. As you can tell, the headlight lenses are dulled and stuff like that. It's not reproduction parts on it. It's still got the old wood wheels. Seems like it's in fair shape. It's got some problems. Got some chips. Gonna have to be repainted, Corey, and need some chrome work. The interior looks good. It's been redone. Should have been done in fabric instead of naga. This seller wants to get $14,500. And since I'm no expert, I can say that I would have paid that without a doubt. But Corey and the old man aren't so easily convinced. So what are you looking to do with it? I need to sell it. I mean, I just got too much stuff and too many cars. What are you looking to get out of it? I'd like to have around 14 5 something like that. OK. I'm going to be honest with you, my man. Whoever restored this car didn't do a very good job. I mean, it looks like it was a father-son project or something. So I'm going to have to figure out what it's going to cost to make the car right. Let me go get my buddy a call. He'll uh, come down and take a look at it for me. How you doing, Corey? Doing well. Tell me about this. It's a 1924 Dodge Brothers business sedan. Had a restoration done on it. Starts and runs good. Well, you know, Dodge Brothers was the predecessor to Dodge, obviously. There were tons of American car companies back in the day, and not many survived, and Dodge Brothers made it. When the expert inspected this, noticed that it could be worth $10,000, which is still not bad. You mind if I check it out? No, go ahead, help yourself. Yeah, man, these old wheels are cool. It's kind of like the early version of the pin drive hub. Let's see here, man. I dig the old Speedo in here, man. The speedometer is way cool. You mind if we take it for a little spin? No, sir. And you, it changed so much, but it cruises nice, man. So what do you think it's worth? In the state that it's in, I'd put it somewhere between, between eight and 10 grand, something like that. Everything works good on it. I mean, I don't see why they couldn't just buy it now. Because then I'm selling somebody else a project. When I sell stuff, my customers typically like it to be done. Give me your bottom dollar. What do you want for the car? I'd like to have 11, something like that. I'll offer you around 6,000. Even with him saying in the shape it's in right now, it's worth it like eight. You said eight, we say six, I'll go to seven. They were going back and forth, but finally settled for $7,500. Let's go 75. <sighs> What do you think? I'm not going to lose the car over 500 bucks. I'll go 7,500 bucks. Come with me, man. Let's do some paperwork. Shelby GT 350. I bring you from the Gone in 60 Seconds movie, the Shelby GT 350. And my jaw dropped to the floor. How's it going? Good. How you doing? 67 GT 350? Yep. Only 1,175 made total. Carroll Shelby was a great race car driver as well as a great builder of cars, and that's why Ford got involved with him to begin with. Got it here in Las Vegas about 12 years ago. It's a treasure to own. What made this car famous was the movie Gone in 60 Seconds with Nicolas Cage. They nicknamed the car Eleanor. That's why the car is worth more value today. The 67 is the best period. I appreciate that. I, it really is. I mean, this was the way Carroll Shelby envisioned the car. Okay, and he worked on it, his guys worked on it. This is clean, this is really nice. 
Ah, it looks all beautifully stock. That's what I like to see. Yep, original four-speed top loader. It's got 62,000 original miles on the car. Original gauges. I'm sure the upholstery's been redone. Just the inserts in the seats actually have been redone. Well, that's, that's expected to be done. It's just as long as it's done right. Right. And this all looks right. So how much are you going to get out of it? My asking on the car is $125,000. I've done my homework on this car. I know the value of it. I feel it's a fair price what I'm asking for the car. OK. I'm going to call up a buddy of mine, have him come down here and help me figure out the price. I mean, it's just, it's an expensive car. There's a million little things that raise and lower the prices on these things. OK. Nice. There it is, the Hypo 289, man. It looks like it's a, it's a pretty well-kept engine bay. You know, this is definitely a car that's been cherished, I can tell that. Can you imagine owning this car? And more importantly, can you imagine driving this car? That's exactly what they did. I am so jealous right now. What really makes the difference right now is the test drive. Do you mind if we take it for a spin around the block, make sure there's no problems, everything's running right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's OK. That's fine. Yeah, she's nice, man. She's real tight. In the end, the expert knew this car was solid, drives perfectly, and its value is just off the charts, from $100,000 to $110,000. Crazy, huh? Well, um, it's a solid car, runs and drives good, so I'd say anywhere between $100,000 to $110,000. You got a great car, man. Great okay, car, Rick. Appreciate it. Thanks so right, much. See you soon, good luck, buddy. Rick decided to throw only one offer. 100 grand. I'm not going to negotiate. I will give you 100 grand. There's no money past 100 grand. None. Is it feasible uh, that you might be able to do 105? No. It's All right, so that's the max you're going to go. Not one dime more. You got a deal. I'm surprised this guy went for it, considering it was $25,000 below, but he's got the money and Rick's got an amazing car. 1960 Chevy Corvair. I don't know much about cars, but what I do know is that you cannot go wrong with a Chevy especially when it's a 1960 Chevy Corvair. What do we have here? My 1960 Chevy Corvair. I thought it was really unique in its own way, so I had to have it. I think it's in pretty good condition. A lot of Corvairs are just rust buckets. I need to sell it just because I need some money for school. I'm hoping to get about 10,000. The least I'll take is about 6,000. This is a 1960? Mm -hmm. It was the first model year. In 1960, if you were like an 18, 19 year old kid having this car, you were cool. It was a modern, slick looking car. This was a really innovative car. I mean, GM completely redesigned the car with this thing. What was so new and innovative about it? Air cooled motor in the back, rear engine car, really fuel efficient. I mean, this thing got, I think it was like 26 miles to the gallon. Let me show you the inside. Okay. This was considered a compact car back then. It's a decent sized little car for a small family. We put the seatbelts in. OK, yeah. Because of this car, a lot of car safety was created. Can I look at the motor? Yeah. There she is. All right, sweet. What do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. I'm asking 10 grand. The car is great. The condition's amazing. But does it run good? Well, Rick's going to take it for a ride and find out. Is it worth $10,000? I mean, the car is over 50 years old, after all. Uh, do you mind if we take it for a spin? Sure. I mean, I liked the car because it was just so different when it came out. I mean, they had to redesign everything to make this car. It's got a rear air-cooled engine, independent suspension. They took some chances making this car. And it smells like there's an exhaust leak. Ugh. So um, this is cool, but I don't know what to think of it, man. It feels like a death trap. I feel like this car really had it all. It looks good, and it runs good. Where in the world did you get the number $10,000 on this car? <laughs> well, that's about what I have into it. You're asking too much for this car. You got some transmission problems. It's not shifting the way it should shift. It's dropping out of gear and doing some weird things. Well, Blue Book and uh, my insurance has it at 8000 Crash it. <laughs> God, son. <laughs> I, there, there's just, there was no way I'd even go close to that. If you were going to force me to make an offer, you, I'd offer you three grand. I, I couldn't take that. We're way too far apart. Thanks for coming by, though. Thank you. I think $3,000 was a little low ball, but hey, I'm not the expert. They are, and this time, they were just too far off. Sadly, no deal here. Steve McQueen car. When they got a call that somebody had the actual 1951 Chevy convertible that Steve McQueen drove in the movie The Hunter, Rick didn't waste a second to come check this out. So this is it, huh? 
It is 1951 uh, Chevy convertible that Steve McQueen drove in the movie The Hunter. And where did you get it? It came from his estate. You can hear him grinding the gears and you can hear it running in the movie. Okay. The seller thinks it's worth eighty to hundred thousand dollars. Wow, do you think that's true? I'm a used car dealer and this is what I do is try to turn a profit. It's probably worth somewhere between eighty and hundred thousand. If we can come in somewhere around forty grand, that'd be great. So this was the from the movie Hunter. You have the paperwork saying this was in the movie, this was I Steve do, McQueen's yes. car. Yeah, all the documents and everything we have, it was just uh, a movie car. Okay. It came out in 1980. There's a few things that could use a little attention, but uh, that's a pretty damn clean car. So how much you want for it? I'd like to be in the neighborhood of about 40 grand. I mean, I love the car. I'd love to make you an offer on it, but I just want to make sure everything's right on this thing. Do you mind if I have someone come down and take a look at it, just to make sure there's no major hidden problems, everything's correct? Sure, I understand. Well, let's see what the expert has to say about it. Wow. I'm really glad you guys called me out for this one, man. <laughs> this is beautiful. You know, in 51, that was when Chevrolet started that campaign, see the USA in your Chevrolet. They only did about uh, 20,000 of these in a convertible. What you looking at, Danny? Just seeing, you know, how much of it looks original. It's been a while since it's been restored, but you can tell that uh, whoever did it did a nice job with it, man. Wow. It's really clean. It sure is, man. The car looks beautiful. You know, and, and it's not restored to the point where you wouldn't want to drive it. This is a car you can have a blast with, man. Can I see in the trunk? Sure. You got some certificates in here, too. That's cool, man. Yeah, certificates are what you need to see. Should we take it for a spin? Is that all right? Whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> I should be driving this car right now. It's really solid, man. There's not a rattle or a shake or nothing in this car. Oh, dig This it. is a nice car. It really is a nice car. After taking it for a ride, we have two things to consider here. The car itself is worth below $30,000, but... Remember, it's not any car. The Steve McQueen factor brings it up. My job was easy today. So what do you think it's worth? You know, I've seen 51 Chevy convertibles going for all kinds of prices, but I think I would solidly put it in the low 30s as far as the car is concerned. Now you've got the McQueen factor. OK. That falls right into your court. OK, well, thanks, Danny. Absolutely. How much do you want for it? 40 grand. It's in the neighborhood of 30, just the way it is. I think Steve McQueen's got to be worth a little bit more. I'll give you 35 cash. I put it down on the money where I kind of needed it to be. Can you come up a couple grand? To what, 37? 37? I, I think it's a fair price. Finally, they settle for $37,000. I think it was a win-win here. 37,000. All right, can I drive you down to the pawn shop? We'll take care of it. Let's go. All right, you're driving the Jeep back. Give me your keys. Panhead bike. A biker is looking to sell his custom Harley Davidson. It's a panhead bike. Hey, came in with a 1951 panhead bike for you guys to check out today. All right, sweet. I got a warehouse in the back. You want to pull it around and reach over there? Sounds good. That's it, man. 51 panhead. Don't start falling in love with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of motorcycles. I buy them and sell them, ride them till I get tired of them. You know, I was gonna ask around 19,000 for it. Obviously it's a pan head. I mean, the heads look like pans. Harley's big innovation was the enclosed oil system. You know, the pan head was the first time they were able to do that completely inside the motor. Who built it? This was built by a guy named Donnie Luce. Uh, it's registered as a 1951 pan head. So it's registered as a Harley? It's a Harley. What are you looking to get out of it? 19,000. While the bike looks extremely badass, I'm not convinced it's worth $19,000. Apparently, Corey isn't either. I've got a few concerns. I'm not a good mechanic by any means. You know, I don't know how well this thing runs. I got a friend in town. Uh, do you mind if I have him take a look at it? Absolutely. No problem. So this is it, man. 51 pan. Yeah, this is looking good. Yeah, the first pan head was actually made in 1948. It was a definite improvement from the knucklehead motors. It was a lot more reliable, and they were quieter. Was this pan an EL or an FL? It's an EL. What's the difference between the FL and the EL? The FL was a larger motor. It still has some power because it's so light. They still sell because it's a pan head. If it was a 74 cubic inch, it'd be worth a little bit more. Could you start it up for me? Absolutely. Sounds good, man. Quiet, man. So you're saying everything's good mechanically so far on it? So far, it seems sound, man. All right, so I guess the only thing left to do is test drive it. You mind if I take it for a test drive, man? Go for it, man. First, he's got to take it for a ride. Let me tell you, if it runs well and he can get it at the right price, he'll probably keep it for his own collection.
when the expert took a look, he determined it's worth $15,000 retail. He's crazy if he thinks he'll get that retail price. This bike ride's great. What do you think it's worth? Uh, in the market now, since it's so soft on selling bikes, I would put it at 15000 as retail. Okay. Well, my man, I can work with that. Appreciate All it. All right, brother. Thank it was you. good to meet you. Thanks, good man. luck, brother. I mean, I'd like to offer you like ten grand for it. No, man, I couldn't do ten on it. Looking more around fifteen. I'll give you thirteen grand for it. How about fourteen? Thirteen three, and you got a deal, man. Man, I got I got a lot into it. How about thirteen five, and you got a deal? Finally, they settled for thirteen thousand five hundred dollars. I'm surprised Corey went close to the retail price, don't you think? I'm not gonna lose the bike over 200 bucks. You got a deal. Good deal. All right, All right. Buddy. appreciate Sounds it. good, man. All right. Come with me, we got some paperwork to do. All right. 1940s Indian Chief with Sidecar. A customer came into the shop saying that he had a cool bike in the alley, and yet he didn't say that the bike was absolutely amazing. Hi, how are you? Um, I've got a really great motorcycle. I think you're gonna wanna check it out. Sweet, I got an alley in the back. You wanna pull it back there? We got it. It's nice. You got a 1940 Indian Chief uh, with Sidecar. World War II veteran. This is really cool. I came to try to sell my 1940 Indian Chief with sidecar. I'm an Indian collector and just a beautiful bike, and it rides great. I'm selling to pay for my daughter's college. I'd like to come out with 46, 45,000. Um, I'd go a little bit lower, but not much. What you're looking at is a 1940s Indian Chief with its own sidecar. So, how'd you get it? I used to live in the UK, and I came across this. Bought it right there on the spot. All right, they're just cool, man. Tell me about it. It was originally built in uh, early 1940s, sent over to France for the war effort. Okay. And uh, about 5,000 of them were made. They were all used originally by the French, but when the Germans came in, the Germans used them. What are you looking to get out of the bike? So I was hoping to get between 55 and $60,000. Corey has got to bring in an expert to give his opinion on this World War II bike. I'm astonished, though. I got a buddy that I'd really like to have to take a look at it. Let me know what it's worth, a few things like that. Sure, sounds good. Wow, this thing is clean. It was a, one of the most reliable bikes that the military had. What makes it so reliable? The way the engines were built and the transmissions, they were a lot more sturdier than the Harley Davidson ones. How fast do you think this thing would go, you know, fully loaded with three guys and a machine gun? 50, 55. I mean, if it's like a dirt road, you don't want to be going too crazy. The guy will fly out of the sidecar bouncing so much. So why'd you bring me down here, man? This thing's beautiful. You know, I need to know what it's worth. Uh, before I give a price, I mean, I'd like to take a ride in it, see how the suspension is in that sidecar. You bet. Yeah, man, it's really smooth. Yeah, it rides nice like a Cadillac. The bike looks in perfect condition and runs that way too. Plus, it's got the original sidecar. Can't say no to that, and it's worth $46,000. So, Chris, what do you think it's worth? With the market today, I put a price on this at about $46,000. Well, I appreciate it, buddy. All right, brother, thanks, man. What's your bottom number, man? I came in thinking the bottom line would be $46,000. Be thirty-eight grand for it. That's that's a little bit too low. I can't I can't do that. Uh, thirty-eight's a high number for me, man. I mean, really, I I'm not gonna be making that much profit off of it. I mean, I I just gotta cover all my my costs. I gotta get 40 out of it. Believe it or not, during this clip, I've seen Corey be really giving. Came to a deal of $38,000. Yeah, I'm a sucker for motorcycles, man. I'm not gonna lose it over two grand. 40 grand. Let's take a plan. Right, Thanks. 1970 Triumph TR6. It's been established that Rick loves Triumphs, and he doesn't waste a single second when he gets a call to check one out. Hey, how's it going? Oh, Rick, thanks for coming out. I got something I think you'd like to see. This is uh, original, 70. TR6 Triumph. I've got a 1970 Triumph TR6 I think that Rick would love. I've had this motorcycle for about 10 years. This bike is original, unrestored, like a new. I'm interested in getting $20,000 for this motorcycle. My wife would like me to thin the herd, so if I sold it, she'd be happy. Just like this time, it looks like the perfect match to Rick. They were just amazing bikes. They were so much better than a Harley, in my opinion anyway. They didn't weigh a thousand pounds. I mean, in the 1950s, you had Triumphs doing 100 miles an hour, which no other bike would do 100 miles an hour. And this bike came from uh, Bob LaPan's store in Detroit. Okay, so where'd you get this thing? I bought it from a uh, friend of mine who had it in his collection. It was a Triumph a year younger than this that Evil Knievel used here in Vegas to jump the falls in uh, Caesar's Palace. Can I fire it up? Sure. I love the sound. 
It's tuned, I'll tell you that. It is. All right, so how much do you want for this? $20,000. It sounds, looks, and runs great. What will the experts say? Let me have my buddy come down and take a look at it, see what he thinks. We'll go from there if you don't mind. You got it, have anybody take a look at it. Wonderful motorcycle you got there. Didn't get any better than that. I think, you know, it's important to kind of know the history of the bike. They were idolized by Hollywood. They were idolized by Elvis Presley, Marlon Brando, Steve McQueen, probably no one more famous with Steve McQueen sitting on his motorcycles, the essential Mr. Cool. I think there's uh, some things we can look at here and see. At the end of the day, he put an $11,000 price tag on it. Okay, so the big thing, what do you think this thing's worth? I just don't see anything that they're trying to fool us on, Rick. It's there, it has not been changed. What I see in the fact that I know that's original stuff. I'd put $11,000 tag on this and feel good about it. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll give you 7,500 for it. No, I'll keep it. The seller has a tough bargain and would not let it go for less than $9,000. I'm surprised Rick didn't negotiate a lot on it, but this seller stuck to his guns. What's your best price? I'll let it go for 9,000, not a penny less. 8,500? No. 9K. Finally, he decided to pay the 9K he asked for. I shouldn't be doing this, but I'll give you the 9,000 for it. It's a deal. All right, um, we got a deal. 741 Indian Motorcycle. Even I got revved up when the Pawn Stars crew came out to check out a classic 1941 Indian motorcycle. This is a rare version made for military use. Okay guys, this is why I called you out here today. Look, my 741 Indian, it's a 1941 model. These are really cool bikes. I called the guys from the pawn shop down today to come take a look at my 1941 Indian. I wanna sell this motorcycle today to get some money to finish one of my other projects that I have going at the time. So where did you get this thing? Well, we actually brought this up from New Zealand. My dad saw this and fell in love with it and had it shipped back up. It's a neat bike. It's really simple technology. Uh, you, know, you just basically have two cylinders, a distributor, and I love the rear suspension. Springs on the seat. This could be one of those Indians that was made for military use. That would totally explain the left-handed throttle. Yeah, they usually had their gun pouch back here so they could pull their machine gun and shoot it with their right hand. I don't know what you think, but this is totally badass and everyone's into it. How much were you looking to get for it? Well, I'd like to get 12000 for it. Uh, would you mind if I had my buddy come down and check it out? Sure, I don't have a problem with you calling anyone down. What kind of toy we got today, man? 1941 Indian. This is cool. It's a left-hand throttle. That's cool. This is definitely a military version. This is a really cool piece of American history, I think. Well, let me check this thing out. And, uh, and let's give it a good once over. There's a few things missing that just right off the top of my head, I can see like, you know, like the air, air box, air filter over here. What about the gauges? Yeah. I don't have the gauges at all. Okay. And it is missing the chain guard. Gotcha. Do you mind if firing up right now? Can we hear it? Sure, I'll give it a shot. Love it, love it. I want to hear this thing run. But there's one little thing. Fixing it is not going to be cheap. So what's your verdict? Well, it's labor intensive is really what you're looking at, is, is taking it all down and refinishing everything. I would guess you're probably going to put somewhere between four and five grand into making her really, really pretty. When it's finished, it should be worth somewhere around, you know, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000, somewhere in that ballpark. It depends on how far you want to go with it. Okay. Thanks, Danny. Absolutely. Okay, so how much you want for it? Uh, I was asking 12. Okay. I think more like eight. You know, if we cut to the chase and quit the haggling, could you do 10? In this market, nine's gonna be what I can do. Nine is a little low. How about 95? But Corey was still willing to pay $9,500. I guess this has gotta be good. Check out the final project. I'm not gonna lose the bike over 500 bucks, man. I'll take it. Deal. Deal. All right, son, you bought it, you loaded up. <laughs> Shannon, come on, brother, bring it in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, come on. That's nice. <laughs> you guys wanted it authentic, right? So it's got the Thompson and grenades. That's amazing, dude, amazing. I absolutely love it. It's hard to believe it's the same bike, but I do think the color red was better, but what do you say? This is where we'll end our video. We hope you enjoyed watching. Make sure to comment and hit that like and subscribe button too. Hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Share this video to your family and friends. See you soon.